Well, happy Thanksgiving, CIV friends and family, and welcome once again to an online and at home and soon in-person worship gathering. I have a couple of announcements for you. First and foremost, uh, we will be gradually getting together in person. And so we will be meeting on Saturday afternoons, but don't worry, we are still going to stream our services so you can go ahead and attend uh, the services whenever you can. Towards the end of our worship service, we will be partaking in the Lord's Supper together as a community. So what I want to encourage you to do is perhaps grab a cup uh, of juice and then also uh, bread if you have it at home or even crackers so that you can join us towards the end of our service. So again, uh, go ahead and grab that and during our service we'll partake of that together. If you are also a part of a, not part of a small group, I want to encourage you to get involved. Uh, we have small groups going on throughout the week, so go ahead and contact us and we'll get you plugged in. Next Saturday, uh, we have a photo opportunity. So we're going to meet together at Terwilliger Park. I'll put the information down here below. Uh, but we're going to meet there next Saturday from, I believe, 5 to 7 o'clock p.m. And uh, we're going to take pictures together and get some fall photos. So if you're available, come and join us. Before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. And I'll turn it over to the worship team. Father, we thank you again so much for this beautiful day uh, that we can gather together in worship. And God, we are so grateful uh, for uh, your goodness in our life. Father, when we look at all that is going on around us, it is so easy for us to lose heart, to be discouraged, and even perhaps be disillusioned. But Father, we believe that you are still good and that your love endures forever. And Father, our desire today is to worship you in spirit and in truth. God, I continue to ask and pray that you will continue to do wonderful works even in our midst. We love you, and once again, we say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Happy Thanksgiving Day to everyone. I would like to thank God for the life that He has given me and for so many opportunities to share His Word to many kinds of uh, people in different walks of life. I'm thankful for family and friends. I'm, I'm thankful for God to allow me to reach this age. Um, I am thankful for our church family and how we've been able to grow together and get to know each other more despite all the challenges we've had in this pandemic and just how God has worked through all of us. And I thank God for my salvation 
through the Lord Jesus Christ. And I, I am thankful for having a place to sleep. I am thankful for having the food to eat and I'm thankful for the time I have with my family. I thank God also for uh, the beautiful season of autumn that I can see the beauty of God's creation. We're thankful for food, our house, our family, our family, our friends, and our home. I thank for God for everything that He made. I can see His creation is perfect. I'm thankful for family, my next one for friends. I'm thankful for God. So and I also thank God. I'm nakilala ko si Pastor Angel and Elma, and then karon kami ng may good study. So I'm so thankful. I know that. What are you thankful for, Zoe? Cupcakes? Yeah. What else? What else, Zoe? Spoon. For the spoon? Okay. What else? You're thankful for? Ice, Ice cream. Ah, yummy. What else are you thankful for? Daddy? Oh, Daddy! Okay! <laughs> what else? The contentment I have is because in my God, I trust. And this is grace. Grace, abounding grace, which I do not deserve. But God is good. He is good all the time. I am thankful for my personal family because without them, I wouldn't be here today. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> I thank God for many friends and for my family and uh, the church. I'm thankful that I could go to church freely. We are thankful for Canada and for the nature. And we are thankful for everything. I'm thankful for my family, food, God, free health care, and a uh, roof above my head. He made me just like me. <laughs> I'm thankful for all the blessings God has given me, especially our church, my family, my friends, the food I get to eat, the roof over my head. I'm thankful for the help God has given me through this pandemic. I'm thankful for the sun in the morning, the stars at night, and this life God has given me. So thank you, Lord. Thank you so much. I have so many uh, things to thank for. Napakabuti ng Diyos sa amin. Hindi kami pinabayaan. I'm grateful that I have a family that cares for me. I am uh, fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm thankful for being able to live in Canada. And I thank God for my children and my family. And I'm thankful for family and friends that are here to support me during all these courses of life. Thank you, Lord, for everything. Mm -hmm. I'm thankful for the power of music. I'm thankful that I, be, I can be a part of it and that even during this pandemic, we can do this during school. I thank God for Jesus. Now I am saved. Yeah! <laughs> and thank God that I have my Bible study by the help of my friend, Elma, uh, so that I will know more about God. Hey Josh, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my brother. I am thankful, thankful that we can go to school and everyone's safe. 
God. And thank God, He is my provider, both spiritual and physical. I'm also thankful for um, having amazing... Oh yes, uh, clothing is very yeah, important. Yeah, clothing is just like the... <laughs> without clothing, I mean, I don't know. For camp, yes. I thank God above all to Jesus Christ who saved me from my from the penalty of my sin. He died for me and He saved me. Thank God above all that He is my Lord and my Savior. Having all the things I need and more. <laughs> I'm thankful for, the, for my family and that I get to see them in a different atmosphere. What? Okay. Happy Thanksgiving! And uh, my wish for you all is that you may be content with what God is giving you or has given you. I'm thankful for this coffee. Okay, Israel, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for the love. I'm thankful for family and friends. I'm thankful for God. Thankful for Thanksgiving. <coughs> I'm thankful for food. My last one is something for school education rights. <laughs> we are blessed by God to have an opportunity to lead the tribal ministry here in Davao City. We want to thank you for your prayers. We thank the Lord for His faithfulness and his tremendous work in our ministry to the people of the mountain. God never fails to sustain our needs in doing our mandate of making disciples. There is no May God bless you all. Happy Thanksgiving Day. Happy Thanksgiving! Have a great one and we're gonna give this away. Are you thankful for Mama? And what else? Are you thankful for Lolo and Lola? Yes. Are you thankful for um, Jesus? Okay. Thank you, Zoe. Blessings. Blessings. Good morning, CIV, and happy Thanksgiving. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Thank you for joining us today online, and I hope that you guys are all having a great day. God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. I'd like to encourage you where you are at with your family and friends. Stand up. Let's put our hands together and worship the Lord.
Fathers, we look all around us. We see that the evidence is clear. That, God, you are here and that your goodness is with us. God, there's so much to be thankful for. And if anything, God, the life that we have because of Jesus Christ is more than enough. So we say thank you. For it's in his name we pray. Amen. We are in a new phase of COVID-19 in Alberta. While we continue to test widely and identify some new cases daily, the spread of the virus the remains COVID relatively stable. COVID-19 cases in Edmonton continues to rise, with the city becoming the hot spot for the virus. On Friday, 97 new cases of COVID-19 were identified, while our lab conducted more than 12,600 tests. On Saturday, the lab completed almost 17,000 tests and we identified 263 additional cases. Direction traffic is uh, completely shut down in this area and these protests show no sign of slowing down. In a statement Friday afternoon, Education Minister Adriana Lagrange says the province would not push back the start of the school year, writing that local boards have the autonomy and flexibility to prepare for their individual re-entry. What if you're here? We 
pray for wisdom, your voice to hear. And we cry in anger. Good morning, DIB friends and family, and welcome once again to an online and at home worship service. We are here in Jasper. It's Saturday, and uh, we decided to take some of our members out here to Jasper to enjoy this incredible creation. And uh, we've just had a blast. So I uh, hear, hear from some of the ladies. Good morning, Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I am very thankful for this beautiful creation of the Lord. I and thank you so much. You should be here. <laughs> I cannot believe this kind of place. There's a place here. Yeah. Yeah. I did tap tap ask a pause, but this is very, very, very rare. It's a rare opportunity. Thank you. Okay, thank to you. The to what it takes to know your near. And what if trials of this life are your mercies in disguise? When friends betray us, when darkness seems to win. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you for another day that you have given to us. Another day that we can live in the world that you have created. Another day to be sanctified, to be made holy. Another day to be molded, to be like your son, Jesus Christ. I pray, O oh Lord, that you would prepare our hearts and our minds as we sing the songs that we are about to sing. And I pray, O oh Lord, that you would... Um, Talk to our hearts and our minds as we listen to your word, O oh Lord. Open our hearts and our minds to be able to apply this for the week that is about to come. It's what it takes to know your need. What if my greatest disappointments or the aching of this life is the revealing of a greater thirst? This world can't satisfy. The evidence of God is, is everywhere when you just pause and take a moment. My wife and I uh, drove back yesterday from Jasper with a number of our members. And uh, Dindin was just saying to me, like, it's just so evident that God is, is, is alive, that there is a creator. When you look at the mountains and when you look at the, the creation, it's just evident. And why is it that we do not trust in this creator? And the reality is it's because we, we don't demonstrate the faith that we need. And uh, for those of us who have been called into faith, those of us who have received Jesus Christ, we need to remind ourselves daily that even in the midst of crisis, in the midst of the challenges that we are experiencing, that all of these things are still evidence of God's goodness. In fact, all of these crises that we're experiencing really is God's way of getting our attention. And the only way, way that we can respond is to say, okay, God, we, we are in a position where we need to hear from you today and we want to be able to understand understand what you're doing, that we might join you where you are at work. But inevitably, right, along that journey, you will encounter uh, questions, you're going to encounter, you know, complacency. And one of the questions that my family loves to ask me on this journey is, everybody, are we there yet? That's Dindin's question. Where is the closest washroom? But inevitably someone along the journey is going to ask the question are we there yet and that can be a really annoying question especially if you're the driver but really when you think about that question that question is a diagnostic question and i think when we look at life like a journey like a road um you know point a to point b c d so forth and so on we can similarly ask ourselves those diagnostic questions well are we there yet right and again, my simple answer to that question, whether it's on the road or whether I'm looking at my current circumstance in life is simply yes, because where you are is where you are currently supposed to be. You cannot be where you are not. Where you are is where you need to be. And until you accept that, you will never be where you want to be. Sounds like a rap, doesn't it? <laughs> it sounds like a lot of just 
confusing words jumbled up together. But when you think about it, practically speaking, and even when you employ wisdom, you can't be where you're not, right? You are where you are for a reason. And until we learn to accept our current circumstance, will we be able to move forward, especially if we want to move forward in the right direction? This is applicable on you know life's journey. This is applicable when you're driving around the city. And it's applicable even, even in relationships. You know, where are you going? And, and so that question, are we there yet, actually leads to the next question, which is, well, where is there? Oh, look up, child. Hey, oh, look up, child. Hey, look up, child. Hey, oh, look up, child. Child, hey, look up, child, hey, look up. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me And all my days I've been held in your head From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head Oh, I will sing Of the goodness of God Wow! God is so good, isn't he? Three things I want you to remember. Number one, draw close to God. Number two, dive deeper into his word. And number three, don't give up meeting together. Let's go get it. If you have your Lord's Supper elements, I encourage you to go ahead and get that ready. Uh, I would encourage uh, the entire family to partake in this wonderful expression of thanksgiving and remembrance of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. All throughout the book of 1 Corinthians, you hear the Apostle Paul's desire to encourage the Corinthian church uh, in all that they're going through and all the challenges and obstacles that they are encountering. And in chapter 11, he talks specifically about the Lord's Supper and the importance of gathering together, the importance of being unified uh, because of Jesus Christ. I want to read to you uh, the passage from the message translation starting in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, let me go over with you again exactly what goes on in the Lord's Supper and why it is so centrally important. I received my instructions from the Master himself and passed them on to you. The Master Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread. Having given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. This cup is my blood, my new covenant with you. Each time you drink this cup, remember me. What you must solemnly realize is that every time you eat this bread and every time you drink this cup, you reenact in your words and actions the death of the Master. You will be drawn back to this meal again and again until the Master returns. You must never let familiarity breed contempt. So as we prepare our hearts to partake in the Lord's Supper, May we be reminded once again of Jesus' promise that he is coming back. As we partake of the bread, uh, we are reminded by the Apostle Paul that it is in remembrance of what Jesus Christ has done for us. So let's go ahead and pause for just a moment and uh, we'll partake together. Father, it has been a long time since we've gathered together in person, since we've worshiped you corporately, 
And God, we are thankful for the technology that we have. We are thankful that we can still join our hearts and our spirits, even our voices, because of technology. But Father, we desire more than anything to worship you together, that we might experience the fullness of worship. And God, even as we take time to partake in the Lord's Supper, Paul reminds us that we are not to allow it to become too familiar, but that, Father, it should be a very special commemoration of what Jesus Christ has done for us. And so, Father, even now, we pray that you would forgive us for taking Jesus Christ lightly, for not acknowledging his place in our life. We ask you, God, to cleanse us from within. And Lord, as we are reminded of what Jesus Christ has done for us, it should lead us, Father, to great worship to, and a great expression of once again surrendering our lives to you. We pray, O oh God, that as we partake of this bread and the cup together online and at home, that we would do so with a grateful heart. How perfect that today we celebrate Thanksgiving and that you, O oh God, would be the object of our gratefulness. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I encourage you to go ahead and take your bread. Be reminded that this bread symbolizes the broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shall we partake together? And the cup is the blood poured out that washes all away our sins. So we partake together. Father, in a moment, we will be celebrating our Thanksgiving meals. But we are reminded, God, that there is a banquet that is waiting for us the marriage of the bride and the groom, Jesus and his church. And Father, until that day comes, we continue to remember the death, the birth, burial, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray, God, that we would continue to live our lives in a way that brings honor and glory to you, but also brings healing and reconciliation to a broken world. Thank you, Jesus that you allowed your body to be broken, but that you were resurrected. And because of that resurrection, we have hope that we too would have our brokenness healed and that this world would be reconciled back to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you for joining us online in that home. I want to wish you once again a happy Thanksgiving from the CIV family, and I pray that you would enjoy this time together with your friends and with your family. God bless.